As a former player, you're so proud of our 2011 football Lenore Ryan Bears because they brought the prominence back to our athletic program. Lenore Ryan has a history of championships and to see that restored in 2011 makes you proud to be a Bear. I'm very proud of not only our football team, but our athletic department for standing behind our football program and standing behind our athletic programs to produce champions. First of all, congratulations to Coach Houston in football. Uh, I guess the last really good team I've seen was the 94 team with Leonard Davis and Craig Keith and those guys. So uh, I, it just, it was really a fun year. Um, so the crowds were great. A lot of old people came back that hadn't been back in a long time that I hadn't seen because I've been around a long time. But uh, it was a great year for them. Um, as far as we're concerned, it's early. I don't know. We have played, I think, four pretty good teams. Queens and uh, Limestone are, are favored to win their league, and we were able to beat them. Uh, down at Mount Olive, we played um, Fayetteville State, who's huge. I had two 6'11 kids that were pretty athletic. Uh, they didn't do a lot, but they were. it's hard to get to the basket on them. And then we played West Virginia State, who was was middle of pack last year in their league, but they are picked to finish in the top three. So our biggest problem right now is we're having trouble shooting the basketball, which I didn't think we would have that problem this year. But uh, we made a little pack with the guys early in the year. I said, if we'll guard, I'll give you a little extra freedom on the offensive end. So we've done that. And right now, and Johnny can be out, I think teams are shooting in the low 30s against us from the field and the mid to high 20s from the three-point line. So. Uh, and we were, cr we were creating about um, 17, 18 turnovers a game, averaging about seven steals a game. So uh, I think the big difference in us this year and versus last year is we've got some new guards in that I think are pretty good. Jarvis Prairie's from my hometown in Williamsburg, which that basically says it all. Uh, the last time we had a kid from Williamsburg, we were pretty good, Jeff Haddock. And the last one before that was 1974, I think. So. Uh, but he's changed the culture. Down at Mount Olive, he played 70 minutes in two games, scored uh, 23 points, 14 rebounds, 10 assists, two turnovers, and guarded, and guarded. And he puts people in spots. But uh, like I said, our biggest problem right now is we, we're just not, we're not shooting the ball very well. And it's not like we don't shoot it enough in practice. But um, we're going to try tomorrow to go back to that pregame meal we had against Limestone when we scored 94 and see if that makes a difference. And if that works, we're going to stay with that the rest of the year. So, but uh, B.J. Beasley asked me after that game, he goes, Coach, when's the last time you scored 94? I said, it was the last time we were pretty good, B.J. <laughs> so we're just, our biggest hope this year is each of the last three years we've gone down two starters. Marcus Hodges and his backup went down a couple years ago, three years ago. D.J. went down two years ago. And then Matt Kuntz, the game after him, went down for the year. Then last year, Matt Kuntz went down third game, fourth game in the year with a fractured kneecap, and by the time he got back, there was only six, seven games left. And technically, when, when you first come back from a fractured kneecap, you really can't push it because the problem is you might fracture it again. So, so I think he's pretty hungry to play. I think BJ's done a good job for us, and I think, surprisingly, Mark Terrell has come off the bench for us and done a really, really good job for us. And we decided to make those three guys captains, and they've kind of kept everything in pretty good shape in the, in the locker room. They inform people that we better get it done first because we don't want to come back a second time. So it's, we haven't had to do yet yet. But we'll see. Got to go to Anderson tomorrow. And uh, they were picked above us in the preseason. Two years ago, they went to the lead eight. Last year, they got to the regional finals and then lost. So they could have been the lead eight two years in a row. They weren't. So they got the player of the year back in Denzel Jones. About 5'11 guard that char started out at Charleston Southern. And uh, he's pretty good. So we have our hands full down there. And it's a single game, so uh, the girls move their game to another time, I think in January. And then Saturday's game, Carson Newman, again, they're picked above us preseason. And uh, that's going to be a single game, too, because the girls, Car I think Carson Newman, they were in exams and the girls didn't want to play then, so they're going to play on the 15th, the same day we play Barbara Scotia. So, uh, we shall see. And then we have, what, Lees McCray next Thursday? So we'll have three games 
before Christmas at home, which is a, a rarity. But uh, we'll see. We've been playing hard. We practiced hard. Yesterday was good. Uh, if we could have practice like that every every day, I'd be tickled to death. But uh, like I said, it's still early. Let's knock on wood. Let's see what happens as, as things go. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask. Um, Talk about the conference split. What's your expectations as the conference as a whole? Is it going to be up, down this year? What, what, what do you think? Well, I, I would expect Wingate to be really good. Uh, they've got eight guys that have been there and played a lot for, for four years. They've got three guys that are four-year starters. They've been starting since their freshman year. I think maybe his biggest problem is to have them, as they start to get older, and Coach Houston contested that, sometimes they think they know it all and they don't want to listen to people. And that, that, can, that can be a problem. But Lincoln Memorial has three starters back, six of their top, I guess, reserves coming back. Um, we were picked six, I think, Wingate first, Lincoln Memorial second, Anderson third, Newberry four. I, what our first thing is, we want to get in the top four so we get a home game. Then I want to get into the top three, and then I want to get greedy and win it. But um, let's do that first since we didn't finish in the top four last year. Uh, Any guy that <clears throat> down a certain tempo you're trying to keep this year, Coach? Uh, trying to win. Whatever tempo that is. <laughs> when I played for Coach Odds, he said you got to have three tempos: slow, medium, and fast. Because if you play a fast team, you don't want to play that way. You got to be able to play slow. If you play a slow team, you want to speed it up. You got to be able to play fast. So, you know, we've scored 94 and we've scored 53. So, we've been able to play both things. And Johnny, you can test. I'm not sure how many points we're giving up a game. Six low 60s, probably averaging mid to high 70s. So that's pretty good. That last really good team um, was about about that way with Kindred and those boys, and the really good team, which is the 20th anniversary of that, with Tyrone and Larry Lentz and Jeff Haddock and Tony Mallard, Brian Lewis. Uh, they were they were that way too. They just beat up on people. You know, but, about six six across the middle. They seem to play a little bigger. We're we're, I, we're long. We're not we're not big as some of the teams we've had in the past, but we're long. Uh, Denzel's long, um, the point guard Jarvis is long, his backup Trey Shuford's long, uh, Trey Beverly comes off the bench 6'6", six, six, he's long, uh, Matt's 6'8", um, Alan Jones is, you know, Alan, we played <coughs> four games in an exhibition, he's only played in two. I mean, the last couple of years, um, we've been hurt inside, so we were forced to have to play people that maybe did not want to work as hard as necessary, but it's a little bit different. Now, I think the last couple of days, he's, I think he's seen the right on the wall. If he wants to play, he's going to have to pick it up and get after it. And we got a freshman kid that's playing about 10, 12 minutes a game from Freedom High School, Rob Noyes. He's playing well. Um, so, and Jarrett can defend. He's long. Alex back. And, you know, we got two guards that could be eligible at Christmas time. Hunter, before he broke his wrist last year, was shooting 61% from three. He's coming back, hopefully. And then AJ, hopefully, he'll be back. So it could change up the dynamics of what we're doing. But uh, we're also we're going to redshirt one kid who uh, I think upside is unbelievable. He's one of the few guys I've ever had that can put his head on the rim at 6'6". He can put both hands on top of the white square. But Davy Crockett might be better than offensive basketball player than he is. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't want to waste it. We want to try and teach him something this spring. He could probably be a great 440 guy, but he's not running track this spring. He's going to be in the gym with me. And I might find him a job up here this summer so he stays up here all summer. So, but uh, he's scary defensively. You mentioned BJ. Can you talk about what he's meant coming in? He's really good. He's been here two years. If we could find a junior college kid every two years just like him, he goes to class, you tell him one time, he does it. He works hard all the time, he never complains, does what he's supposed to, and he keeps the guys in line. I mean, you can't ask for any more than that. I mean, our, I think our biggest chore the last five, six years is getting kids to get up and go to class. Now, when they get done running a 20 and 20, they kind of understand they don't need to do that again. And then about the third time they do it again, we're probably going to get rid of them. But, I mean, from day one since he's got here, he's been he's been great. I, I'm, if we can find a kid like that, every, like I said, every two years, I'd jump on him in a heartbeat. He's he's that good. He fits the old mold. 
Josh Kendricks and Reggie Brattons and things like that. So I wish we could keep him around for a couple more years. But I think he has a chance because he's so athletic, he can play overseas. And he does a great job for us defensively. He's never going to score more than maybe eight, ten points a game, but he's really good off the ball, help side defense, blocking shots, saving people. Um, and he's really, really, really good passer from the post when you throw it down to him. And they try to double, he finds the open man. So uh, he's just, like I said, he's just easy to coach. You have he's low maintenance, you don't have to worry about him. So Rich, you look like you got a question. I'm not going to pressure you, but you look like you got a question. Well, you, you answered. I wanted to know how you felt like our competition was going to be in the Sacramento Conference. And I think you told us who our, our toughest competition is going to be. Well, I think, I, I, I'd like to think we're better than six, but only time will tell. So uh, we'll just we'll have to see. We haven't, we really haven't played anybody bad yet. Not bad, bad, where you can beat by 50 or 60, which not much fun anyway because I don't think you get a whole lot accomplished when you beat people by 50 points because you'll do dumb things you can't do against good teams. So. Any major coaching changes or dynamic changes? Or well, Jameson, who's helped me the last two years, got a full-time job up at West Caldwell. And he's helping um, Matt Anderson over at uh, Caldwell Community College, and hopefully that's going to lead to a full-time assistant job. And I think a lot of you might know John Worley's helping us this year. He's retired. He uh, coached. Hickory High football for about 12 years head coach, and before that he was 12 years head coach at men's basketball. Took two teams to state finals, and one of his players is our second all-time leading scorer, Daniel Willis, Willis with 1,980 points. If we would have had one more game, he'd have scored been a 2,000-point scorer. And then his other real good player, Will Johnson, played to played at Carolina. He's the more head scholar, so uh, he's good. He keeps things loose. So. Anything else? All right. Thank you very much. Thank well, thanks for everybody uh, coming out again today. And uh, congratulations to uh, mention last week to Coach Lentz and the basketball team for the great start. And as we transition into recruiting, uh, you know, which is, we started this morning, uh, you know, gearing up to be, uh, you know, to get out full time with that. And we get into our recruiting weekends in January. There's nothing better on a recruiting weekend when you bring, you know, your top guys on the campus than to have a, you know, a good basketball team and be able to, you know, sit over there and, and watch them play after the meal in the evening. And you know, when I first got here a few years ago, Coach had a, a, a great group there and a lot of fun to watch. And they, you know, they really got them down the floor and played hard. And so it's just it's exciting right now for the potential that they have for the season. So uh, with our game Saturday in uh, Jefferson City. Obviously, we're very, very disappointed in the outcome, and uh, but I, I could not be more proud of, of our players and the way they competed all throughout the game Saturday. And you know, it's one of those where, and and Carson Newman is a, a really, really good football team, and I have tremendous respect for Coach Sparks and what they've done. But, you know, it's one of those you come out of and you feel like you should still be playing. You know, I just, I felt like we just ran out of time there at the end, and and just. And I, I, I just, the way our guys played Saturday, just tremendous respect for them, and just they, they didn't leave anything, they didn't leave anything in the tank. They threw everything they had at them, uh, all day long. And uh, I would think anybody that was there Saturday would say the same thing. It was just a very inspirational effort, and uh, and you know, another big thing is just thanks to our fans, uh, we had. A, it was just a phenomenal atmosphere with our fans and alumni and everybody in the stadium and, and to come out and them, you know, lined up there as we come onto the field and just how loud and vocal and boisterous they were throughout the ball game. Um, it made a strong impression on a lot of the people from Carson Newman and I shared with some of the guys while I go, uh, Coach Carl Torbush, who was a Carson Newman alum and, uh, you know, has coached all over the country at, at the highest level. Uh, he had, he had he called me just to you know say congratulations on the season and everything and he said I don't know how you communicate it he said but somehow he said I want you to communicate to your fans you know what a special special thing that was to see that kind of support and backing there on Saturday and so to come from somebody that's been at the highest level 
uh, in our game and, and been, been around football for a long time. I think that says a lot about the support we have here at Lenore Ryan. So, um, again, we're disappointed with the loss Saturday, but, you know, the biggest thing uh, today, and I've got some guys here with me I want you to meet here in a few minutes, and uh, as they reflect back on their careers here, um, I'm just so proud of this group of seniors and this football team and the program and, uh, you know, the, the type of year we had this year and where we've seen the program grow to every year where, uh, you know, we've, we've seen consistent, steady progress of improvement, you know, over, over, the, over the past uh, years. And uh, hopefully we're able to keep that up moving forward. So, all uh, right, questions about Saturday or the season? <clears throat> Injury-wise, some guys that kept. You know, when there were times, was anything serious coming out of that game? <clears throat> not long term, but uh, you know there, there there are a handful of guys that would not play this week. Uh, Chris Carter uh, had a pretty good concussion. You know, we we can question a little bit because Chris never is truly right in the head. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, he got one there in the second half. He's doing fine though. I, I, I talked to him several times this weekend. Jared Thompson uh, has one. Just saw him a few minutes ago, though. He's doing fine. Uh, Caleb had a pretty good ankle sprain, but I think that probably if we were playing this week, he would, he would be able to play. Uh, we did lose him there towards the end of the game Saturday. Uh, but uh, nothing long term. Carson Newman seemed to be a team that kind of matched you guys on the <clears throat> rushing side in their two games. I think they're the only team. You only gave up 100 yard games to 14, four games this year, and two of yeah. them were against Carson Newman. You talk about what they were doing. That they're they're a good offensive football team. I said in here last week. I think just about every every starter on their offense was nominated for all conference. Uh, I think he nominated every offensive lineman. Uh, they're the best offensive line we see all, we saw all year easily. There's there's not even a team that had close to what we saw Saturday and back in September. <laughs> Uh, Kevin Day, their center, was the co-Jacobs uh, uh, Blocking Trophy Award winner with, uh, with Caleb Myrick. Um, so, and, and Brandon Haywood. I mean, he was probably the difference in their team this year versus past years. Uh, you know, he gave them the stability there at quarterback. He's a big, strong runner. He, he's a good operator. He did a good job taking care of the football Saturday, and he made some big, tough runs uh, late in the game to keep, the, keep their winning drive going. Um, you know, Brandon Baker's a great player. Tyrone Douglas was a great player, but I think Brandon Haywood is really the key to key to them, you know, offensively there. So, good football team. As far as recruiting goes, does playing this long <clears throat> help you, or does it hurt you because you're not out right at the end of the regular season? Well, we've been, you know, we've done a, a a fair amount of recruiting in season throughout the fall, so I don't think it hurts us any. Uh, we had a, a big recruiting weekend uh, for the Catawba game, which is a pretty good game to. You know, with the atmosphere we had here that day and, and the meaning of the game, we had um, probably 70 recruits on campus that day. So uh, I, I do think that having the success and playing like this um, not only helps our those recruiting weekends, but it helps us with name recognition. <clears throat> you know, once you get into the playoffs, you're not just covered locally, uh, you know, here in the this part of North Carolina. Uh, all of a sudden, you're, you're carried more regionally. I know that the Knoxville uh, Knoxville paper had a couple of articles about us last week. So you know we're getting the Lenore Ryan name out uh, a little bit more in the southeast, which is obviously our big target area. Compared to your recruiting class that you brought in this year, any specific needs that you're you're looking to try to address in your, in your recruiting? Well, we graduate five of our front seven on defense, so I think that that's something we've got to see. Are we are we okay with what we? have coming back. Um, we were able to redshirt a very, very good freshman class, we think. Uh, you know, with, with coaches, uh, you know, it's all potential until they get out there on the field and do anything. It's kind of like Coach Lentz talking about his, his kid that can jump, you know, he's got to develop. And same thing with our kids that we redshirted. So, uh, but we got to look and see, do we have what we need there? Um, you know, we may want to take a transfer there and that, to get, just to get an older, older player there. Um, offensively, we have the bulk of our offense returning next year. Uh, we graduate Caleb, uh, Artis, and uh, Ruben, but you know you got the bulk of the the roster back, and so uh, you know there it's just you have the guys depth-wise that are going to develop to to move on as we get older because we will have a pretty 
uh, senior laden offensive line next year. <clears throat> After such a successful season, but then that kind of that tough loss, what's the first thing you tell your guys in the locker room when you do you look back on just what it's been for those guys and what kind of season you've had? I'm I'm proud of them. I'm I'm proud of where the program has come in the time that the seniors have been here. I'm proud of the way they're going out. Uh, there's not a one of us that don't wish we were playing this week and and down in Valdosta, um, you know, in the in the final eight in the country. But uh, at the same time, when the kids that are fifth year seniors came in, we were three and eight. Uh, the guys that weren't redshirted came in and uh, you know went five and six. So. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a pretty good reversal from trying to be competitive to going out as the top team in the in the league. You know, winning the conference championship and making it the second round of the playoffs, first playoff NCAA playoff victory in school history, first time to the postseason in 50 years. So, you know, for those for that group of seniors, that I just I'm proud of what they've accomplished as a group and individually. <clears throat> How does the schedule get decided for next year? Well, they change it up on us next year. Our, 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 we did have an open date pushed to the end of the season, uh, right before the Catawba game. We will not open with Carson Newman next year. I think it's Winget as our conference opener next year. We'll, our first game will be Concord at home. Uh, then we'll be at Davidson. Um, and then the schedule really got flopped around a good bit. We did, uh, I got a message from uh, Mr. McGahee yesterday that we got a signed contract back for um, to fill our open date and add an 11th game and a sixth, sixth home game next year from Alderson Broadus in West Virginia, Division II program in West Virginia. So they'll be coming here for the first um, play date in November. So we'll have an 11 game schedule next year, six at home. It's a D2 game, which uh, we wanted to add. Uh, you know, if we can win it, that will help us possibly with the postseason if we're able to have a a successful year, so you now we're excited, excited about that. Excited to get another game at Red Stadium too. Yep. I know. I heard, I heard, I heard there's one restaurant there, right? To the Hardys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flick was filling me in on it. He's been there. Big deal to get to it. But uh, yeah, that'll be year after next. It's a two-year contract, so home and home. How do you get the one? Another question. Two years in a row now. A lot of expectations now seem to keep going. How do you get ready for the expectations for next year? Well, I've said the same thing the last two years. Is uh, the expectations that I have personally for our program, and the expectations that the returning kids will have for our program will probably exceed anything that the media, or the fans, or alums have. So. Uh, I mean, it doesn't bother me because it's really not important. I mean, preseason predictions mean nothing. I mean, everybody wants their team to, to do well, and everybody thinks that they should do this or that or whatever. But, you know, our goal right now, I can tell you our goal for next year is to win the conference championship for the third year in a row. I don't know when the last time somebody won it three years in a row was, but that'll be the, that'll be the goal of our team next year. So uh, anything beyond that depends on how we do. The field goal that got blocked. Was it the pressure? Was it low? It was low. I haven't looked. I haven't. I haven't looked at the game yet, but it was low coming out. <clears throat> I was going to look at it this morning, but I just, I didn't. So I'll look at. I'll look at it sometime. <laughs> so, anything else? All right. Well, I'm excited about our three guests. Okay, uh, you, you guys have met Demetrius and uh, Reuben and Brandon throughout the year. Uh, these three guys, uh, Caleb Myrick, the Jacobs Blocking Trophy Award winner for the South Atlantic Conference, fifth-year senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Artis Gilmore, four-year starter at wide receiver from Asheville, North Carolina. I've known Artis since he was about eight. And uh, his hair wasn't quite so restrained. Uh, Clee Artis Davis, four-year starter, outside linebacker from Miramar, Florida, just outside of Miami. Uh, I'm so proud of all three of them. They're all three going to graduate on time. Uh, hopefully, Caleb. <laughs> so uh, I promised you. I promised your mama two weeks ago. So uh, you got to you got to take care of that now. But uh, they're all three graduate on time this year. They're outstanding young men. They are a good reflection of what our program is 
and has become, and I'm so proud of them. So they'll be entertaining up here, so you fire away at them. <laughs> you got to squeeze in there, Caleb. Get over next to the next There you go. Well, how does it feel that, it, that it's over? I mean, now that you had a few days to look back at, at Saturday's game, Cleveland, we'll start with you. Uh, it really, I mean, it hasn't hit me yet. Practice usually starts around 2.45 today, yeah. so, I mean, I guess around practice time, it'll actually hit me that we don't have to go to practice today. Yeah. It's going to kind of hurt inside, I'm not going to lie, because, you know, it's kind of been what I've been used to for the past four years, so it's going to hurt. Yeah, uh, it's going to take some getting used to, you know. Yeah, I've been playing football for so long, and it's always, I'm just so used to coming back to my room, dropping off my book bag, and going straight to practice, so now it's going to be like, well, I just got time on my hands now, especially since I'm getting, I'm getting ready for like the next season since this was my last year. So it's just it's going to be something to get used to over, over the time. So it's just too much free time. I, I've never had to yeah. feel this much free time before. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I'll start studying a little. <laughs> Dr. Coco will appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys talk about, and Coach, you just alluded to, you know, when you guys first came, <coughs> how things, just the flip-flop that's going on with this program, you know, and how you guys were a part of all that. I was actually kind of scared at the beginning of the season. We started off one and two, and it brought me back to five, four or five years ago. When I first came in, we were three and eight. I was like, I can't let this happen. So uh, the seniors don't, I mean, we didn't like lose, we hate losing more than anything. I, I know I do for sure. It's just, it's just what it had to be. We start winning. Yeah, uh, for my first year, I know it was like, we had some good leaders on those past year's teams, don't get me wrong, but majority of the team, it was just like, well, if we won, we won. If we lost, who cares, you know? And I feel like with the difference between the past seniors and these seniors now is that we want to win every game. You know, we all go out there and we give it all every time. You know what I'm saying? We didn't really have that the past few years. We had like eight, uh, eight or nine people giving it their all and the other two just like, well, it's whatever. You know what I mean? So I feel like these past years we had a whole team effort more than just like more individual efforts throughout the years. So I feel like that reflects with how the program has changed from back then to now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the seniors that we had, that red shirted and what is it, 08? Yeah. Yeah, we had those we have those seniors and we have the seniors that came in in 09. So we we all, you know, my freshman year in 09, we developed kind of a bond that, that no other team I feel like has because we were five and six that first year, but we all had a common goal that nobody really liked losing. So, you know, spring practices, everything got more intense and everybody decided to start buying in. So once everybody decided to start buying in the program, the record got better every year. And it just came to this year. We wish we could have, you know, yeah, made on. it a little bit further, but hey. The history of, of the football program, you heard about it a lot when you got here. Mm -hmm. A, did you buy into A, there was actually history here, and now that you <laughs> have done what you've done, how do you view the history of this football program at, at LR? Uh, actually, when I signed with Coach Goldsmith in 09, I, I wasn't really aware of the history of the school. It was, you know, late signing around the summertime, and, you know, I didn't really have anywhere else to go. Coach G told me to come on a visit, so I came on a visit here. Like the environment, you know, small classroom sizes. You can get involved with your professors. And uh, from there, I signed, and I found out the past records, and I was like, oh, man. Is this what I really want to be? <laughs> so, so, I mean, you know. It, it, it was it was a hard road my freshman year. You know, Coach Houston had to talk me in the stand. I wanted to leave, transfer, things like that. But, I mean, eventually, after everybody decided we were going to stay, we just decided to start winning. We got to come together. Uh, I really didn't believe into the history until I seen, like, the national championship pictures and whatnot that was posted up down in the locker room. But before, I didn't really believe it too much because, I mean, it was so, such a long time ago. Like, when they was thinking about winning the conference, it's been, like, 17, 20 years or something like that. I was just like, man, that's so long ago. Like, I was barely even alive when they had won their last conference championship. So it was just like, well, you know, I think it's all talk, all talk. And then for me, it kind of motivated me because I can be like, we can be a team to come through here and like set our own type of like destiny and our own type of accomplishment so that everybody can look back on us and like, oh yeah, that's, this is where it started. This is where the foundation was built. So I feel like, yeah. So I don't really know about the history, but I'm kind of glad I made a little bit of history for Lenore Ryan. <laughs> I just, I saw it through the fans. Like we only have 1,500 students here, but they're still like, five, six, seven thousand people at the games. So there had to be some kind of history at some point. 
So I mean, people people love the school. Just glad <clears throat> to be a part of it. What about the fans Saturday, being on the road, oh, that's, playing in front well, of that guy? We had more fans than they did. Yeah. It, was, it was nice. It was like a home game. Yeah, that was big. They say uh, they say teams hate when we bring our own personal yeah. tunnel yeah. to every away game. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about that. They say, say the teams don't like that. It's stretched all the way across yeah. the field. Yeah. It's stretched all the way across the that field. Was, that was yeah. a lot of love, Sean. We appreciated that. that yeah. day. Really appreciate it. Well, from the fan base, I just want to thank you guys thank for the you, effort. Mark. In the history that you made. You're welcome. Thank you're awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Talk about Coach Houston and what, what he's meant to you guys and what you're going to take away from him outside of football. Oh, uh, Coach Houston, he's kind of like a. <laughs> It's kind of like a little descendant from Coach G. <laughs> After practice, you know, Coach G used to have the long 30-minute stories. And everybody Coach just wanted to go back to their room. <laughs> Coach was the first guy here. You know, his, his speeches were about, I say 10, 15 minutes, but now, you know, he, he kind of keeps us a little too long after practice. <laughs> so, I mean, you know. But uh, he's, like I said, he, he taught me to understand here my freshman year. He was one of the guys that took me under his wing and, you know, really explained to me. I, I wanted to go D1. I wanted to, you know, I was I wanted to go to a junior college and somehow go D1. But he kind of explained to me that, you know, everything happens for a reason. So I listened to him, ended up staying, and it ended up being one of the best decisions of my life. Yeah. Uh, like Coach Houston said earlier, you know, I know Coach Houston for like half my life since I was little because, you know, he coached at T.C. Robinson, the high school that I went to. And when I came here, I knew that I was going to have somebody to, you know, look over me and watch out for me because we had that history. And then, like Cleese said, my freshman year, I wanted to leave, too, because I was just like, I'm, I wasn't cool with losing. Like, coming from the T.C. Robinson, like, we didn't lose much. We never really had a losing season. So when I came here, we went five and six. And, you know what I'm saying, me being receiving a triple option offense, it's like, man, we losing. I'm not really touching the ball like that. So it's just like, man, I'm trying. At least ain't for me. And then Coach Houston sat me down, talked to me. It was just like the first year is always the hardest. And I was like, okay, okay. And then I talked to Coach Houston and my mama, and I decided, well, I'll give it another shot for next year. And then the next year, that's when we went like seven and four or something like that. And then I was like, well, you know what I'm saying? I'm cool without getting the ball as long as we win it. Like any, anybody's happy as long as we win it, right? So I was like, I'll, I'll stick it out. And then just over the years, we've been from seven and four to seven and three and winning the conference championship to going nine and three and winning this conference championship. So I feel like Coach Houston, we've always had a good little chemistry going back from when I was younger to now. So yeah, he has a good impact on my life. Yeah. Uh, I, I just appreciate Coach Houston and uh, Coach Goldsmith because they were patient at first and because uh, of my grades and they were patient with me and that's what I take from him the most. Uh, learn how to be patient, patient with people, giving me uh, a chance. I just have a comment. It kind of when I asked Coach Lance about BJ a while ago. He talked about being coachable. Um, I think Coach Goldsmith and Coach Houston both through these years have talked about how you all and the whole team have been coachable. And one thing that sticks out in my mind, I believe at Newberry, um, Coach Houston got you Cleares as you come off the field. And a lot of, in, the, in our past history, that the, and I don't know if you remember what I'm talking about or not, but when when a coach took a player right when they come off the field, it may not have been pretty. Mm -hmm. But you stood there and, and it basically looked like you were yes sir, yes sir, and taking what he was trying to do for you and the team at that moment mm -hmm. and, and went back out and did what you needed to do. And that's a pleasure from of mine mm -hmm. is seeing the team react together and help each other instead of getting down on each other. Yeah, because uh, at first, you know, Newberry game in the first quarter, that first series, that was very frustrating for us because we knew we prepared for that team and we knew that we did what we had to do in practice that week to come out and be successful. But that first series, you know, we had a couple of foals in our defense. I feel like we came out kind of flat. So, you know, they ended up scoring on that third play, second play, something like that. And uh, it was, you know, when guys score on us, we, we take that kind of personal. So, I mean, it's, it's like everybody got to the sideline. You know, we lost our composure. But, you know, one thing about Coach Houston is he always keeps his composure. You know, no matter what, it, no matter what the score is, you're going to see him on the sideline with a straight face. And he's going he's gonna to tell you what you have to do. You know, he's not going to yell at you, scream at you, you know, have everybody that's on the sideline chaos. Because we, we've had a couple of chaos moments on our sideline this year. But uh, <laughs> Coach Houston, you know, he, he holds it together. You know, he tells the defense everybody come, get in the huddle. 
you know, we get the ball, we get our plays in that we need to get done. And as long as everybody keeps their mind and does do what we have to do on the field, everything else will take care of itself. You just can't lose your head. Uh, that's one of the his biggest qualities. Very composed. I just have a quick comment. You guys may not realize this now as you get a little bit older and get a little removed from LR, you'll realize it a little more. When I was here, we were terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we won three games in four years, and I've spent probably like the last 10 years blaming somebody else for that. Yeah. When the fact is, I can look at you guys and the seniors that you have, guys like Chris Carter and Jason and those guys too, that you take responsibility for what you're doing on the field and off the field as leaders of your team. And it's that example that has changed things around for people like me and all these other fans that show up to your games. It's different now than it was then. We didn't have five, six, seven thousand people in the stands when I was here. Because, not because we weren't winning games, but because we had guys who didn't take responsibility for the challenges that were put in front of them and really lead well. And you guys have done such a great job of that. And that's something that you'll be able to take with you wherever, whatever's next for you in life. Um, you, you've learned a lot here, and you've set a good example for these for these next guys coming up through this program and for this community and for this school to kind of be able to look and see what it's like to really be able to be lit, led well. And I know that starts from coaches, but it's up to you to personally accept that challenge mm -hmm. on your own. And y'all have just done a great job. I'm just really proud of you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Most special memory from a game, each of you, what's, what was the one thing, if somebody asked you about your career, the, the first thing's going to come up? Mm. I don't think, I don't think. No, that's right. Mm. I was when we won our uh, first conference championship against Catawba. It was, it was I, I didn't get to, I wasn't playing, but just seeing, that was the first time I seen the, the tunnel with all the people coming out. It was at Catawba. People with the tunnel, uh, it was, it was, too high. It was live. It was live. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'll go mines while he's thinking. <laughs> I think most memorable. <laughs> mines so was uh, actually that hit on John Rick. Uh, when he threw that ball up to Joe Anderson <laughs> in the end, when we came back on uh, Mars Hill. That, that was mine. Cause I mean, to see his face. And the, the pain on his face when he was on the floor, like, oh, man, I just threw that pick, and we might be in trouble now. <laughs> I just kept on coming at him, and that, that, was, that was the best moment for me, just seeing his face at that moment, knowing that <laughs> that, that was the turning point in our season, really. It was. It was. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to say my best moment this season has to be when we was down there in Newberry, and we came out, our defense gave up the big touchdown early, and we was down, and then we get on offense, and we drive, and me and Ruben connect for like a 51-yard touchdown just to spark the whole team and just to get us going again, to get us back to where we needed to be to help us come over and beat Newberry. I feel like that right there was probably my special moment of the season. Free gets a t-shirt, bro. Yeah, <laughs> game changer. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, Coach Houston said it uh, on multiple occasions. I've heard him saying his number one thing in recruitment is character. <coughs> and uh, it's clear with, with you three men and, and with the whole team, that in character makes such a difference. You know, if, uh, if folks in this room can tell you a few years ago um, when we would be down, if that happened at Newberry, we were down uh, 21, you know, the points against Mars Hill, the shoulder pads would drop. You knew it was over. And the thing I love about the character that you folks have and the team that we have now is it is never over. It was evident against Mars Hill, it's evident against Newberry, it's evident against this past team. When uh, this, that past weekend, we went up with three minutes left. I mean, there was never a stopping point, never giving up. And that character is clear that uh, it, it, it should be the number one determining factor because that is what has made you folks so incredibly successful. One thing that uh, Coach Houston always says is uh, the next play is, is what matters. So, I mean, no matter what happened to play before, as long as that's still time in the game, we still have time to win. That'll follow you the rest of your lives. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Appreciate it. See you next year.